He was the first journalist to, to actually ask her to be specific, and she used the same technique that she did in the Trump debate. You've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office. Come on. Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? In other words, she never answered the question, how many people have crossed the border illegal? Let me tell you about immigration now. When we came in, how many people crossed? The... Let me finish, let me finish. I'm a woman, i.e., that was the subtext. And then when he asked her, well, if you were the change move forward candidate, you had three and a half, let me, let me finish, let me finish. She looked very nervous. She blinked her eyes, all that stuff. And he just, you know, if, if he really wanted to destroy her, he would have had to be come across as a lot meaner than he was. And I don't think he is wanted to do that, or maybe it wouldn't be wise to do that. But he did follow up on questions. What happens when a political figure is faced with tough, direct questions they can't escape? Kamala Harris found herself in such a moment during her interview with Brett Baer, where he didn't let her off the hook easily. How many people crossed the border illegally? What about the Biden administration's policies? Instead of clear answers, Harris resorted to stalling tactics and vague responses. Victor Davis Hanson dissects this evasive performance, revealing how Harris's inability to address key issues highlights the deeper problem of her campaign, deflection without substance. She doesn't understand her that uh, people don't buy it when she they ask her why didn't you why did you let all these people come into the country well we had a border bill and she's and he said yes but the border bill was going to give massive amnesties well yes we had and then we had another one with re leading republicans well that was going to let in four or five thousand she won't answer the question so essentially i think it uh i i watched the fox panel and they were Harold Ford and all those people were, but you know, basically Martha McCallan and was pretty good. Dana Farina were pretty good. This was a disaster. She didn't answer the question. She tried to act like she was a victim. Let me finish, let me finish. Cause he didn't want her just to stall. So she came in there like, it's a microcosm of the campaign. Run out the clock, stall, talk about, talk about Donald Trump. And what are you doing? You say you're the change candidate or were, are you different or? than Joe Biden. Well, Joe, I'm, I'm a new generation. I'm a new generation. Well, she's not going to answer any, she'll never answer any questions because she can't, because she is a hardcore leftist socialist and her, on every issue, crime, the border, Afghanistan, the economy, uh, energy. She's, a, Bernie, she's left of, by her own voting record. She's left of Bernie Sanders. So what are you going to do? She doesn't have the integrity to lose nobly and say, you know what, I'm a socialist. And I think we don't need a border. It's like all these Senate candidates that all read that was debating um, Ted Cruz. He's he's very far left. It's, it, it's a deer in the headlights. It's Tester in Montana. It's Sherrod Brown in Ohio. Jackie Wilson, Nevada. It's like, uh-oh. 20 million illegal aliens down your throat or defund the police down your throat or DEI down your throat. So we better lie and act like we're moderate because we understand nobody likes who we are. So we're just going to, you know, for, you know, 90 days, try to act as if we're the people that we despise. And that's what they're, I think it's falling apart. She, she has lost about 14 points in the betting in just two weeks. Yeah. And all of the it, it's amazing that it's like the whole country has just collectively shrugged and said, I had enough of this. And I, I really do think that she's down on in the real polls, four or five points everywhere. And it's it's bad. And she's going to. So now the talking point is that election interference and their denialist and Donald Trump, Donald Trump. But. Nobody knows what she wants. And the pandering backfired to the reparation stuff. I mean, it's why would she, in the last three weeks of the campaign, offer something up that's unconstitutional? You can't just take $20 billion of federal money and say it's only going to go to these people based on their racial appearance, right? Yeah. You can't do that. And that's what she's doing. And then well, the, so far, the reparations, the reparations and all that. So...
Yeah. It, that's going to backfire because the black male knows what she's doing. Because if she was sincere, they're going to say, well, why didn't you do it, uh, you know, two years ago? Why didn't you do it when, you know, when you first ran for president 90 days ago? You're only doing it now because you're behind. Everything she's doing is because she's behind. You're only going on Brett Bear because you're behind. You're only going on a few interviews because you're behind. And why are you behind? Because you don't tell the truth about who you are. You don't know who you are. You're just an. There's no substance to you. You're a woman with no essence. You don't. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you're for. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content.